What if you were to spend months, even years, isolated from society confined to the four walls of your room? How would that impact you as an individual? And what could be the repercussions on society at large? Social isolation isn't just about being alone. It's a complex state of existence where one disconnects from the world both physically and emotionally. This detachment is not always a choice. Sometimes it's a response to a myriad of factors like social pressure, high academic and professional expectations, family issues, and mental health problems like depression and anxiety, not to mention the role of technology, which has made it all too easy to retreat into a virtual world, away from real-life interactions. Now, imagine this isolation stretching into months, even years, a daily existence devoid of human touch, conversation and shared experiences. The impact on mental health can be profound. Feelings of loneliness can intensify, leading to a vicious cycle of withdrawal and isolation. Depression and anxiety can deepen, and without intervention can escalate to severe mental health disorders. Physical health is not immune either. Lack of exercise, poor diet, disrupted sleep patterns, all these can lead to a host of health issues from obesity to heart disease. But the effects of social isolation don't stop at the individual. They ripple outward, affecting families, communities, and society as a whole. Think about it. When individuals withdraw, they're not contributing to the economy, they're not participating in community life, and they're not adding to the social fabric. The loss of these potential contributions can have far-reaching implications. And what about the drastic shift in daily life when one withdraws from society? The world continues to spin, life goes on, but for the isolated individual, time can stand still. The world outside becomes alien, and the comfort of solitude can gradually morph into a prison of isolation. Imagine such isolation becoming a widespread social phenomenon. In Japan it has a name, hikikomori. Hikikomori, a Japanese term refers to individuals primarily young, who withdraw from society, choosing to spend extended periods in seclusion. This phenomenon, while deeply rooted in the Japanese culture, is not exclusive to it. It has been observed in various forms across the globe, highlighting a universal, albeit under-acknowledged, social issue. Hikikomori translates to withdraw and isolate, a fitting descriptor for the lifestyle these individuals lead. While the phenomenon is widespread, it is most pronounced within Japan, where societal norms and pressures have a significant influence. This societal seclusion is not just a phase or temporary retreat, it often extends for six months or more, sometimes even stretching into years. The demographic most affected by this phenomenon are young adults, typically between the ages of 15 and 34. These are individuals in the prime of their life, a time usually marked by exploration, learning and social interaction. Yet, they choose to retreat into their own worlds, away from the prying eyes of society. It is important to note that hikikomori is not a choice born out of laziness or a lack of ambition. Rather, it is a complex response to an array of psychological, social and cultural factors. Some individuals might be grappling with mental health issues such as anxiety and depression. Others might feel overwhelmed by the relentless societal pressures and expectations. And for some, the virtual world might simply be a more comfortable space, where they can control their environment and interactions. Hikikomori is a silent echo of the struggles many young people face today. On the surface they might seem disconnected, but in reality, they are just trying to navigate their way in a world that can often feel overwhelming and unyielding. In the next scenes, we will delve deeper into the underlying causes of hikikomori, its consequences, and the steps being taken to address this issue. The reasons behind this self-imposed isolation are as complex and diverse as the individuals who experience it. It is not merely a matter of getting out more or being more social, it is a profound reflection of our society and the pressures it imposes on its members, especially the youth. Hikikomori is not a decision made overnight. It's a gradual retreat fueled by a complex interplay of social pressures, expectations, personal issues, mental health problems, and the rise of technology. At the heart of the hikikomori phenomenon are the societal pressures that individuals face. In societies that value conformity and success, individuals are pressured to excel academically and professionally. This high-stakes environment can be overwhelming, pushing some individuals to withdraw and seek refuge in isolation. The weight of personal issues and family dynamics cannot be overlooked either. Family problems or traumatic experiences can lead to feelings of alienation and a desire for solitude. The home then becomes a sanctuary, a place to escape from the world's troubles. Mental health issues are also key players in this complex equation. 
Conditions like depression, anxiety, and other mood disorders can make social interaction distressing and exhausting. For those grappling with these issues, the allure of a solitary lifestyle can be all too appealing. Then we have the role of technology. With the advent of the internet and the digital age, it's become easier than ever to live in seclusion. Virtual realities and online communities can offer a semblance of connection without the need for physical interaction. For some, the digital world provides an escape hatch, a way to withdraw from the physical world while maintaining a threadbare connection to the outside. These factors intertwine in a complicated dance, each contributing its own unique steps. The result is a gradual retreat into isolation, a retreat that is not easily reversed. The hikikomori phenomenon is not just a personal struggle. It's a societal issue, a mirror reflecting the pressures and expectations that we place on individuals. It's a reminder of the importance of mental health and the role that technology plays in our lives. The consequences of such isolation are far-reaching, affecting not only the individual, but also the family and society. As we delve deeper into the hikikomori phenomenon, it becomes clear that understanding these underlying causes is the first step towards addressing this complex issue. Isolation takes a toll, both physically and mentally. The loss of social interaction and interpersonal skills makes reintegration into society a daunting task. When we talk about the consequences of hikikomori, it's important to understand that this isn't just about spending a lot of time alone. This is about a profound and prolonged withdrawal from the world that can have serious ramifications. The human body and mind thrive on connection and activity, and when these are absent, health can deteriorate rapidly. Prolonged isolation can lead to a host of physical health issues, from weakened immune systems to heart disease. It's not just the body that suffers either. The mind too can bear the brunt of isolation with increased risks of depression, anxiety, and other mental health disorders. The loss of social interaction is another significant consequence. Humans are social creatures designed to interact, communicate, and connect with others. When this interaction is abruptly cut off, it can lead to the erosion of social skills. For Hikikomori, who may have already been struggling with social anxiety or other issues, this can make the idea of re-entering society incredibly daunting. For the families of those affected by Hikikomori, the challenges can be immense. Watching a loved one retreat from the world can be heartbreaking, and the feeling of helplessness can be overwhelming. Families may struggle to understand what's happening, to communicate with their loved one, and to find appropriate help and support. In a broader sense, hikikomori presents significant societal challenges. This is not just about individual suffering, it's about a phenomenon that can have ripple effects throughout communities and societies. It can strain social services and mental health resources. It can contribute to a sense of disconnection and alienation in communities. Addressing hikikomori is a complex task. It's not just about getting individuals to leave their rooms, it's about understanding and addressing the underlying issues that led to this withdrawal in the first place. It's about providing support and creating an environment where reintegration is possible. Addressing hikikomori is not a task for the individual alone, it's a societal challenge requiring collective effort. The Japanese government and mental health organizations are taking steps to address hikikomori, offering psychological support and social reintegration programs. This is our starting point as we delve into the efforts being made to tackle this phenomenon. In Japan, where hikikomori is most prevalent, government agencies and mental health organizations are taking a proactive approach. They've established support centers that provide counseling services, vocational training, and opportunities for social interaction. These centers are aimed at helping hikikomori individuals gradually reintegrate into society. Yet these efforts are not confined to Japan. Around the world mental health initiatives are working to understand and address the complex factors that contribute to hikikomori. In many cases these organizations are tailoring their approaches to suit cultural nuances, acknowledging that the phenomenon is not exclusive to one country or culture. These initiatives are crucial. However, tackling hikikomori is not solely the responsibility of governments and organizations, it's a collective effort that involves all of us. Understanding and empathy from friends, family, and the wider community play a crucial role in addressing this issue. A supportive environment can make a significant difference. Patience and understanding can help individuals feel less isolated and more accepted. It's important to remember that those experiencing hikikomori are not choosing this path out of laziness or rebellion. 
They are struggling with complex social and psychological issues that require time, patience, and professional help to overcome. Moreover, societal attitudes need to shift. We need to foster a culture that values mental health as much as physical health, that understands the importance of social connections, and that recognizes the harmful effects of excessive pressure and unrealistic expectations. This is not a quick fix. It's a long journey that requires persistent efforts. But every step taken, every understanding extended, every support provided brings us closer to helping individuals reconnect with society. Hikikomori, a complex interplay of social, cultural, and psychological factors, is a challenge that needs our attention. As we strive to understand and address it, we move a step closer to reconnecting individuals with society.